Mm. Okay, and hello everyone, and thanks for listening in to another episode of Checking In On Your Daily Walk. In the show, I plan to chat to members of the church and see how they are doing. We'll be hearing personal testimonies of how God has affected our lives and get to know each other a little better. Today, I'll be checking in on someone who works for the front line for the NHS. It is our wonderful Kim Holloway. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, what a lovely intro that was. <laughs> oh, thank you. So how have you been? How have you been coping with the lockdowns? Um, it's, when it first started, it was um, very scary. And it, it's, I think it shook the NHS as a whole because there were, um, one day everything changed. Uh, from operations, uh, what we were doing, um, then we had to learn different ways of like coping with um, using uh, like protection, PPI, and it was like, um, you know, it was, we were, we, I think we were all like blind really, um, because it just wasn't sort of anything that we were used to, and because obviously it's something that you couldn't see, you didn't hear of before, and everyone was bewildered. It was like so a, um, I think it was a shock, absolute yeah. shock. And then everything went quiet. We were redeployed to different units. Um, a lot of our staff, which being day surgery, is um, like. Uh, you come in, have your operations, go home. There's no staying overnight. Um, we were actually then having like different sort of like specialties coming into the unit, but then there would be days where there was hardly any operations going on at all. A lot of our, our colleagues from day surgery were sent to St. Peter's to work with the poorly COVID people. And, oh um, and you can imagine. Yeah. Um, we were supported by lots of um, companies out there. Uh, you remember at Easter time, there was um, a, um, a lovely shop that donated lots of Easter eggs for us. And, oh, uh, and we had like bags and boxes of like fruit and vegetables from like local farms. And I think the community spirit and being thanked, especially clapping on a Thursday, just made it all so real. But it meant something to us. Yeah, you know, I used to stand outside and used to cry, just want to say, you know, yeah, they, they, they're they clapping for like us, you know, the NHS. And yeah, I think we tried our hardest to sort of be like, um, yep, we're going to get through this. And it was. And for me, I had my birthday. Uh, in April and it was like do you know it turned out to be we all made that e effort that special effort to go that extra mile for people around us and that and I had a wonderful birthday even though I couldn't see anyone <laughs> and but yeah my colleagues really pushed the boat out and yeah it was good yeah uh, I mean yeah. it is amazing I mean I do remember the clapping and it was quite <laughs> funny because down our road um someone found do you remember from like the world cup the vuvuzelas from like yeah. 2010 someone found one of those and was like <laughs> <laughs> using that I kept we kept wondering where the fireworks were coming from because it was like fireworks in March had never been heard of no, no, I no. remember like looking through posts and stuff on Facebook and one of um, my friends on Facebook Simon he said that um, he noticed that the bus that he got um because he was still going to work at the time i think he noticed that there was a nurse there um on the bus and would get the same bus as him most mm -hmm. days and so he one day just bought a couple of tubs of chocolate and gave them to her and yeah. said to give them um into you know the break room um yeah. for all the guys that were working on the front line mm -hmm. and you just think well yeah. if he's doing that there must be other people doing stuff like that as well and as yeah. you say you know you had a lovely shop donate to you all easter eggs <laughs> Oh, yeah, and uh, oh, Costas um, actually gave us like cans of coffee, like lattes or Americano, and yeah, it was um, a good, good spirit. You know, community sort of getting together. Um, so even though there was um, obviously um, 
I'm the receptionist and see everybody coming in. Um, it's like now um, mm. I take the uh, temperature of like patients or staff coming in on a, a Thursday morning. Okay, so yeah. I'm in my, um, yeah, I've got my sort of like my, um, my mask, my visor, my apron, my gloves. And I'm thinking, I, I'm a receptionist, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're sort of doing whatever we can, you know, to keep everyone safe and to make sure that nobody, you know, they haven't got a temperature and then we know what to do. Um, so yeah it's good and you you felt safe because you know the um the government and like the head nurses and everything and that had a plan of action straight away and everyone was sort of looked after so yeah wasn't worried at all so um yeah I mean, I suppose like with everybody else now, you've um, we got used to it, and it's a daily thing. And we keep saying it's you know it's probably the new norm, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, as you say, like, I think with that first lockdown, it came as such a shock, and yeah. now with the subsequent ones, it's kind of like, well, we've done it once before, kind of thing. Yeah. But mm. obviously, there must be like a kind of different perspective you guys are having, um, having to be the ones to take care of the people who are then doing that. And as you say, even if you are on the reception, you're then seeing all those people and seeing it front hand, you know, mm. and trying to protect the people within the hospital as well as those coming into it. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I think, um, I think we would we were not just the only ones that were probably like worried and probably frightened um it's bad enough just coming into the hospital to have um any operation um so you know you can imagine the anxieties were so high with people coming in um and you know are they going to pick up something and and I think that's probably a lot of people actually were scared at that time at that point to sort of like not have operations and but now it's you know full back in, in swing where you know we are getting really busy now and i think people have just accepted you know this way and yeah that you know it's uh it's getting busy <laughs> so uh, yeah everyone's back to normal i think yeah Oh, God bless you. And has God been saying anything to you during this time? Um, I think um, the verse that always comes up to me is like, be still, know that I am God. I've got a tendency to sort of like, um, we do go that extra mile. And if anybody phones up and we, and they're looking um, for a particular clinic or something, you, know, you do, you do your utmost to sort of try and put that person, because you always think, well, it could be my mum, it could be my gran or something, you know, yeah. and it's like, you'd always want to do that. And so you, you know, you, you do that, but it's, um, yeah, putting others first, really. And I just felt that at some time, back when it all started that you know god was saying like yeah making sure others were okay so it was um yeah and yeah we got you know it was god's been quite amazing with how you know like even the church and everything else our friends and that we you know we still get to do our zooms and you know catch up with people and that you're not actually isolated but it's um, so there's always something that's coming out of a small group meeting that inspires you or just say, right, yeah, that's how we feel. And so, yeah, it's been an encouragement. So, hmm. so what's inspired you most recently? I think um, the fact that uh, we still have contact with everybody and it's nice to have that uh, contact like from the church because I think we are lucky to have that and we have good friends and you know they would keep in touch with you um it, I don't think it's it's not that good if you haven't got uh, a church connection and I think that's really inspired me to sort of uh, when it says like uh, some of the uh, the meetings 
on the Sunday has been sort of like, you know, you know, has challenged me, especially to sort of, uh, yeah, go and speak to your neighbours, uh, go and knock on the neighbour's door. Um, so you know, I haven't done that yet. So I feel really bad about that. But uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, to be fair, you've been in a hospital. Maybe you shouldn't be the one knocking on the doors. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, I need to do that. But yeah, look, sort of looking out for others um so yeah so the community feel really so yeah even though we're in isolation it yeah. is amazing how the community is still thriving within that yeah oh yeah amazing yeah um we've uh, there's a few like neighbors um you know said oh you know we said oh is there anything like you need you know we're going to the shops and things like that so that's really been sort of nice and I think it was so lovely uh, on a Thursday as well because all the neighbours came out and you got to talk to them whereas normally I think a lot of people just keep themselves to themselves and it, it doesn't matter if we were isolating or not you would just go into your house and I think you wouldn't see anybody yeah it's not like the good old days where like you you know your front door was like left open you know open and anybody would come in go put the kettle on now so uh yeah <laughs> very different uh yeah. yeah now it's uh pl plug your internet in let's have a coffee over zoom <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no no it's um it is what it is isn't it and uh we just got to make the best of it and yeah it is a shame that we can't see others but hopefully it won't always be like this but yeah i'm glad that we can sort of meet like our families over christmas but uh yeah don't be silly keep the distance so uh it is it's yeah. it's really made me stop and think i think you know, mm. as you say, like your life's so busy, and then as soon as you're in the isolation, it's a bit. Well, let's stop and be still and reflect with God. Uh, yeah. Mm. I, Definitely. Yeah. Is mm. that normally ha has God spoken to you about anything in the past recently that you that you think about during this time? Not really. No. Um, I think because I've got a busy sort of work life as well as sort of family even though I don't really see a lot of my family a lot sort of going on yeah I've got my mom um she's in her 80s um so I mean I get a lot of sort of call and everything you know I'm praying and um I'm praying with one lady um and we've seen sort of like miracles happen and um God has worked in amazing ways and so it's like that sort of connection with somebody and it's like wow yeah and it's so important for me because it's like it reminds me then that yeah god is faithful and that you know he's still answering prayers and yeah so yeah i think you know um so yeah busy sort of praying for if anybody wants prayers then yeah i, I have like a prayer list and so i'll just sort of you know, go through them but it is it's just so amazing when you do hear um you know god really well when he answers prayers he really answers prayers so, yeah yeah i mean that is a thing i think um that's been great from the sunday um i know they started off doing like a coffee after the church on sunday but it's the prayer and prophecy now i think um which yeah. has been a lot of fun and it's like writing down all of like the prophecies and like stuff each week and then seeing how um a week or two later being able to tick it off and go actually that one's come true and that one's that that applies to this situation that i'm in at the moment so those yeah. have been quite fun mm. i haven't actually joined um the sunday one yet but um i am curious and uh yeah i i've got to <laughs> so yeah. uh yeah i think i think I'm the course core people at the moment i think it's uh andy phillips andy bell sue bell um and i think barry as well i think those are the cores I'm, i get there when i can <laughs> it's basically agape small group yeah 
Oh, bless. So, how have you how have you found this time then? Um, I struggled a lot during the first one. uh, Not gonna lie, but I think part of it is you know my personality um, and how much of an extrovert I am and how much of a people person I mean I think Mm. one of the hardest struggles I found during the lockdown is the keeping the two meters distance or yeah um or one meter plus or whatever it is Mm. now um because I I I mean as you know Kim the amount of times I'd come over and just give you a hug on a Sunday I know I know it's um yeah it's very strange isn't it yeah very strange I think yeah. to go from seeing everyone on a Sunday and giving you guys hugs to then the next Sunday being like you're not allowed to see people no, for right. the next right. you know, six weeks I think it was at first and then it just kept going on it was a bit a bit of a shock <laughs> uh, yeah I think it would be I think it would be um good for me not to meet it meet up with people because i will break every rule i will go up and like hug everybody (laughs) it's it's what would happen like it wouldn't be on purpose it's just like you see someone and you get excited and you're just like (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh yeah because it's like me it'd be like it's rude not to so uh, i'll be doing yeah i'll be doing it yeah yeah although now it's uh it's rude to do it it's like oh keep back keep back i know i know so yeah so now you know do the elbows and the you know you can do a little dance as well with the shoes you know so um oh the foot shake that was the one yeah it was like trying to keep balance i was hopping it was... Oh, yeah <clears throat> yeah it's um no see that's it that's that's the humor that's the fun of it you know you gotta laugh um because i think we'll all be ended up on the floor crying it's just um you had to make fun of something and yeah doing all those was like um oh yeah what's this one now you know show us a new one and it's, so yeah just to get through it but yeah i think we're all doing okay right but i keep saying to my uh, my family that we are going to have one big massive party when we can you know so uh, yeah but um i think um the hardest thing for me is probably um not being able to like cuddle the grandchildren yeah. it's been so tough and especially i've got a little grandson harris and um uh, he's oh he's adorable and it's like oh he's definitely a nanny's boy because it was like if he gets told off and if he looks at me just all right come on in help me what are you gonna do <laughs> get me out of this <laughs> uh, and he you know he just he, well he doesn't just sit on my lap he wants to jump all over you yeah. and that has been so hard um and i think probably loads of like grandparents would probably say the same um um so (laughs) yeah (laughs) that sucks i mean i'd say you know (laughs) you look too young to be a grandmother kim (laughs) i was shocked when you said your mum was in her 80s it's (laughs) oh yeah she must be what 86 87 now i think yeah i shouldn't reveal a woman's age (laughs) we'll say you're 40 and leave it at that (laughs) well yeah yeah definitely yeah Yeah. so um yeah all i can say is like it's either if i say a lot of people will probably remember came it's good for the skin it was like an ask your mum about came soap (laughs) it sounds like a camel (laughs) oh came (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah that's why you look so young <laughs> oh. oh yeah i shall invest i'll investigate it and yeah yeah you do that right <laughs> <laughs> oh, right well i've got very good fun memories of you charlie in the philippines and the game that when it's like oh just <clears throat> you know i definitely 
at this moment would love to say that I would love, love to go back again. And yeah, yeah. it's um, more that you hear about, you know, um, our brothers and sisters like struggling. It's just like, you just want to be there, don't you? Yeah, yeah definitely. <clears throat> I mean, it is because I think, yeah, we kind of go like every other year and it's, yeah, yeah. will we be able to go out there again next year? Yeah, I know, what, I know. what will be happening? And obviously with yeah. everything that's happened with the typhoon, I mean, oh, you know, cool. it's, it is. Yeah. And I have many a fond memory of you in the Philippines as well, Kim. <laughs> you know, it's where our friendship really began, really. <laughs> the amount of times I would just come over again for a little bit of a hug and just a lean on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> although it has been pointed out to me i did that to everyone however i would just like to say yeah. that's how i show my love <laughs> oh but i remember no. you saying um how steve waited at the airport until the plane took off because he didn't know oh, whether know. or not it, yeah. i would get on yeah i know bless him so yeah so yeah very sweet mm. but yeah that was um yeah I, I think if anyone could go and experience what we experienced, I think it's a must because you just come back so, such a different person. Um, and unfortunately, I think we have a sense of like losing that because we get so involved in our work life, our family life and that, and we just get back into that mould of like having that, um, yeah it's not until you actually really think how it was out there that you know these poor people how they live but they're happy yeah they have they're happy living the way they are and that's oh uh, just amazing yeah so yeah. yeah so charlie roll on when we can go yeah, yeah. <laughs> and anyone who hasn't yet experienced it please pray about it to god and see yeah. what he tells you exactly <laughs> go <laughs> yeah go out go yeah. forth yeah go forth yeah so mm. yeah. well <clears throat> well thank you so much for chatting with me today kim oh it's been lovely thank you for asking me so yeah thank you it's been yeah. good awesome and we'll see who i'm checking in on next time so yeah cool. look forward to it yeah cool so, thanks you're welcome thank you charlie bye. thanks bye, bye.